welcome to the uh, fourth Film Junk video podcast here from Sundance, and I guess this will be probably our last one. It's been a long day, a uh, productive day. Saw four movies, which is uh, pretty good, you know, it's not bad for a day's work. Could have been better. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll be talking in a minute about uh, Brooklyn's Finest, which was the new Antoine Fuqua movie. We saw a couple documentaries, and we also saw Paper Heart. Um, first of all, I thought you might want to respond. Some people on the site were commenting and wondering why you were crying during the last podcast. Um, any response to that? or uh, Just an emotional time. <laughs> So Brooklyn's Finest, we saw that first thing in the morning. Uh, of course, Anton Fuqua did uh, Training Day. He also did King Arthur. Uh, so basically, it's him getting back to the whole cop drama thing. So this movie stars uh, Ethan Hawke, Don Cheadle, um, Richard Gere, um, Wesley Snipes. And, you know, it's kind of starts off, you got kind of all the cliched characters there. You've got, like, the cop who's about to retire, who's got to take the rookie under his wing. You've got the undercover cop who's getting too close to his uh, subjects, and he has to get out before he gets caught. And um, what else? It's just, like, it starts off very cliched, but um, for the most part, I actually liked the movie. It was... Um, you know, pretty, the, the acting was good, the characters were pretty well developed. Um, right up until the end when it kind of got a little too heavy handed. Like, I know that's kind of his style and everything. I wasn't a huge fan of Training Day, um, but. I like Training Day, but this movie I, I nodded off for them throughout the entire thing, so. So, is that a reflection of the movie or a lack of sleep? <laughs> I think it's a little bit of both. Okay. I mean, I, I, it's not like I slept through the whole thing, but um, it just... I, I didn't know... I knew it was about cops. I was hoping it would be more like cops. <laughs> but it's... Right. Uh, I just want to watch a guy, you know, on the beat, in the street, dealing with the day-to-day -day grind. On the beat, on the street, in the heat. Yeah. yeah, but I, I, I thought the cinematography was awesome. The second movie we saw, which is a documentary called Burma VJ. Um, so this one is kind of interesting. It's uh, basically culled from footage shot by undercover cameramen in Burma, or Myanmar as you may know it, uh, from, I guess, in 2007 when they kind of had uh, a bit of an uprising going on and then uh, the, the government came in and started killing people and shooting them and stuff. So these people actually carry cameras and try to videotape it to get it to the outside world because the media isn't allowed into this country. Um, so I thought it was a really, uh, really uh, gripping documentary, but I also thought it was interesting um, because just the fact that it's about how to, how to use the media to kind of make the world aware of what's going on in your country. Um, of course it sucked that we were at the very front row for this and all the footage was totally grainy and couldn't make out most of it, but wouldn't would shaky. Think? Well again I nodded off for a lot of this movie. No, I didn't nod I yeah I did a couple times. Hello, Jala. I, I, I liked it, but I, I don't think I liked it as much as you did. Uh, I thought that the, the kind of framing device that they had where it kept cutting to the main character's like apartment or something where he's calling, he's on the phone and they restage these phone calls that or maybe just make them up, I don't know, uh, reenact these things so it has some sort of narrative throughout it. But it's a very thinly veiled narrative. Essentially this movie, like you said, is, a, is an episode of real TV for an hour and a half. It's uh, just extended on the street camera footage of uh, protests. And 
I, I didn't. I was waiting for something crazy to happen. Um, so after that, we saw another one called Big River Man, which I was kind of excited about. I mean, I had heard it described a little bit as Grizzly Man because it's about a guy who's because they both have man in the title. Yeah, uh, basically, but they both sort of. I thought had environmental themes because this guy swims rivers um, with the, you know, in order to draw awareness to pollution. But that really wasn't touched on very much in the movie, I didn't think. Um, basically, what you get is a guy, he's an endurance marathon swimmer. He swims the entire Amazon River and with his son and a couple other people in a boat following him. And it's basically just about that, but it really turns, takes a kind of a weird turn where he starts to go insane and the movie tries to reflect that in sort of like a artistic way. Um, I, I didn't feel that he, uh, well, again, I, I, this one I definitely did not off a couple times. Um, and the, but in, in terms of the insanity, I thought that that seemed completely built out of their footage. I mean, I didn't really believe he truly went insane. It sucks because, like, it sounded really interesting. I wish, you know, they stopped in all these different countries as they went through it and stuff. And they just tried to be uh, unconventional. And I think in this instance, I would have preferred something a little more conventional. And so we finished off with Paper Heart, um, which is, uh, stars Michael Cera, but it's not really his movie. It's more, uh, the project is based around Charlene Yi, which uh, she has appeared previously in Knocked Up. It's probably where she's best known from, but she's also a stand-up comedian and musician. And so this is kind of her first big breakout role. Uh, but the movie is very interesting because it's not what you'd expect from the sort of Judd Apatow, um, you know, group. It's, uh, we had heard going in, it was part documentary, didn't really know what that meant, but it really is literally, half, half of it is a documentary where they're trying to find the definition of love and they're just going around talking to different people and asking people on the street questions getting people to tell their stories of how a couple's telling how they fell in love. And then they intertwine it with sort of this fictionalized take on Charlene Yee's relationship with Michael Sarah, and the two are actually dating in real life. So it was really interesting meshing of fiction and nonfiction. Uh, what would you think of Paper Heart? Uh, I liked it a lot. I, and to be clear, the, like, Judd Apatow has nothing to do with this, right? Right. Um, and it's, uh, I mean, there's some appearances by, uh, like, Martin Starr and Seth Rogen. But, I mean, it, it basically follows this, it's kind of like Borat. It's a romantic comedy version of Borat. But intercut throughout that is her continuing to make this documentary and interviewing uh, people about love. And, and that was the most interesting stuff, I felt. And the stuff with Michael Sarah, the scripted stuff, I thought was good too, but if it was just that, this movie wouldn't have been uh, as interesting. And that's pretty much it for us from Sundance. Probably uh, we'll have some written reviews on Film Junk and the documentary blog at some point this week. And uh, yeah. That's it.